Hello, and welcome all to this demo on Trigger, an automation tool for layer marker-based animation. This video will go in-depth on the mechanics of layer marker-based animation and how Trigger can be used to revolutionize your workflow. Let's get started with a brief overview of the animation we'll be recreating in this video. We're going to jump into the basics in just a sec. But notice all these layer markers here. Each one of these layer markers is actually triggering an animation from inside its own pre-comp. I can move these animation triggers to any point in time and even trigger different versions of an animation from within a pre-comp. Let's start with some of the basics. Here we have a pre-comp named Tap States that's a nested layer inside of another composition called UI. Now I'm going to go to Window, select Trigger, and find a nice place to dock it in my UI. Now with my pre-comp selected, I'm going to press Retime. Now when we dig into this composition, we'll notice that a trigger null has been added. I'm going to go ahead and play these animations for you. We have a tap state. We have a swipe right. We have a swipe left. A swipe up. And a swipe down. Now let's start adding some triggers. I'm going to select all the layers, turn on Generate Triggers on Comp Layer, and click Add Trigger. Right away, you'll notice that layer markers have been added at the endpoint of each of the selected layers. If you select layers and press Add Trigger, the layer marker name will reflect the layer name of the layer selected. If I back out and view my Tap State's pre-comp layer, you'll notice that all the layer markers inside were automatically generated onto this layer. This is because we selected Generate Triggers on Comp Layer. Furthermore, these layer markers are actually triggering each of the individual animations inside our pre-comp. If I want to trigger the tap animation at 3 seconds, all I have to do is grab the layer marker named Tap and move it to 3 seconds. If instead I wanted to trigger the Swipe Left animation, I would just have to grab the Swipe Left layer marker and move it to 3 seconds. So when the current time indicator reaches a layer marker, it will trigger that animation from inside the pre-comp. At any point in time, you can rename your layer marker to any trigger inside the pre-comp and it will update instantaneously. Now let's look at some other ways that you can add triggers using selected keyframes and custom names. I'm going to go out and reveal all the other layers in our composition. Right now we're going to focus on the composition called Sidebar. For the Sidebar, we have a transition in, a series of highlight states for each menu item, and a transition out. Instead of selecting the nested pre-comp layer as we did before and pressing retime, we can simply select a layer and press Add Trigger. The script will then prompt you if you want to add a trigger null, select Yes. Your composition will now become a trigger composition as long as it's nested as a pre-comp layer inside another composition. Another great functionality of Trigger is the ability to select keyframes and create custom triggers. I'm going to go up and name this trigger Highlight Item. I'm going to make sure Generate Triggers on Comp Layer is selected. Now when I press Add Trigger, layer markers will be placed at each of the selected keyframes, incremented to avoid layer marker name redundancy. If I back out and view my pre-comp layer, we can see that all of our Highlight Item triggers have been added to our pre-comp layer. To make things easier, I have made layer markers non-case sensitive, so don't worry about capitalization errors, just make sure to check your spelling. If I dive back into the sidebar menu, I can create custom triggers at any point in time by selecting the trigger null and giving the layer marker a custom name. In this case, I'm going to create a trigger called In and turn off Generate Triggers on Comp Layer. As you can see, we've created a custom marker inside our pre-comp, but it's nowhere to be seen on the outside layer. This is because we unchecked Generate Triggers on Comp Layer. I'm going to go back and use Trigger to generate this marker for me. For the Out transition, I'm just going to select the first keyframe and create a trigger named Out. Now you can see, regardless of how we created our triggers, whether it be selecting keyframes, layers, or adding directly to the trigger null, all of these triggers were generated to our global comp layer. Now I can start moving and reordering animations, sequencing them together at any point in time exactly how I like. I can replace the highlight state from item 3 to item 5 simply by replacing the layer marker. I built in a series of fail-safe features into Trigger 
to fix the common problems people run into while animating with layer markers. In the past, comps that had layer names that didn't match their source names would throw an error. Now you can rename your trigger comps any name at any point in time and even have multiple trigger comps with the exact same name without confusing the time remapping expression. Let's keep moving forward and retime the next composition. Here we have an animation that I'm going to break apart into two separate triggers. The first I will name out and the second I will name pressed. Compartmentalizing your animations into triggers allows you to break down complex animations, giving you the ability to non-destructively rearrange, retime, and reassemble your animations without spending days moving hundreds of layers, all for a relatively small timing tweak to your project. As you can see when I ran preview, our animations are successfully tied to our triggers. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed up this video in which I'm repeating this exact same process across the remaining compositions. Animating in this way removes the hassle of moving and adjusting hundreds of layers in your timeline every time your client needs a small tweak, alternate version, or maybe an all-up removal of a certain section of animation. When we trigger any of these layer markers, the time remap expression will play from the beginning of the layer marker called and it will stop when it reaches the next layer marker, so it's always good practice to encase any single animation between two layer markers, or else the expression will play to the end of the comp. This allows you to focus on the nuance of your animations without being so strongly tied to a linear timeline. So now for the fun part. We have all of our trigger comp set up, all of our layer markers set. So now I'm gonna play the animation where we can see all of our animation events triggering in synchronicity. Notice how the chat bubbles animate in from the bottom. I also have another version where the chat bubbles animate from the top down. I can easily test out this version by changing the layer marker chat up to chat down. And like that, I've made a rather large change to my animation without having to move any layers. After seeing the chat down animation in relation to all of my other animations, I feel like the chat up animation is more appropriate, so I'm going to change it back. Great. Now notice how we're selecting the top person as we transition into the chat view. I want to change this to select the middle person and have the profile image on top update with the appropriate image. So to do this, I'm going to change my trigger from person 1 to person 2. And to change the profile image, I'm going to change the layer marker switch1 to switch2. This will change our profile image to match the image of person2. Now you'll notice that the animation will select person2 in the list and update the profile image to match the thumbnail of person2. Now that you understand how to use layer markers for animation, I'm going to show you how to use trigger comps within trigger comps. I'm going to go out to our master UI layer, which contains all the animation that we just created. I'm going to go to trigger and press retime. Then I'm going to head back into our UI composition and add a layer marker on our trigger null when our transition starts. I'm going to name it chat view. Now I'm going to create a trigger called sidebar at a point in time before our sidebar animation begins. If we head back out to our master UI layer, we can now control our global animation using these layer markers to trigger our transition at any point in time. If at any point in time you want to tweak an animation embedded deep in multiple trigger comps, the changes will be instantly updated in your master composition. This allows you to set up the framework of your project once while you focus your time on refining the triggers. Now I'm going to bring in the tap states comp, which we created in the beginning of this tutorial. I want this tap to tap on the menu icon to bring in the sidebar. All I have to do to get the timing correctly is move the layer marker to the correct point in time. And this concludes my demo on Trigger. I hope that you learned a lot on the power of layer marker based animation. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Get your version of Trigger today at aescripts.com.